Welcome to the special episode of Coffee Conversation powered by the Emerging India Forum TIF and our tech partner Prime Infotech Solution. Today we are at SUIMS Business School and doing a special episode regarding their activities SIRCC that is SUIMS Industrial Research and Consulting. So we have with us <coughs> Professor Ayan who is head of the SIRCC. So welcome Ayan sir okay. to this a special episode yeah. uh i just wanted to brief our audience ke what is srcc for your knowledge so this will help yeah. companies whoever are looking for projects for to work on you can contact srcc i answer i am also the advisor over sims business college uh so what they work on market research consumer markets distribution channels in the following sectors like fmcg consumer durables manufacturing banking finance services and insurance strategy for product launch how to grow in existing market and new markets for micro small as well as medium size enterprises focus on customer delight and excellence services strategy and execution for sustainability projects sales planning and execution of marketing projects sales strategy and execution to drive growth in the retail sector standard operating procedures across different sectors so companies who are looking for projects to work on students are, work, are available <coughs> from the management stream and under the able guidance of professor ayan and other professors you will get a good team to work on and you will be saving your cost <coughs> so this is please it's a humble request connect with and empower the students mm. and with this coffee conversation you will come to know okay what are the activities how they work and they have also worked on one of the projects like market research on legal tech technology adoption in india so you will come to know so professor yan Once again, welcome to this special episode. Uh, so, Ayan sir, hmm. what criteria do you consider when selecting projects for SIRCC activities? So, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, Ms. Lain, uh, Lain Amir Virani. So that's the way we, you know, legal tech evangelist and show philanthropist. <laughs> very grateful to all your support. and uh, you know uh, prime infotech has a special place in 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 sircc because that's mainly because they are the first institution you know, i would say the first corporate in a way which came forward to support us because you see when we do a project you know there are there is a certain uh, model on which we work you know we it in terms of because we have our costs and all that and they agreed to work on the particular model and that is what we really grateful to them and uh, they they came forward uh so i think couple of things we look at mainly is you know what is our core strength as an institution what is that we can offer you know be it the respective faculties that we have you know be it domains be it marketing be it finance what is that we you know we have and how is that we can create an edge you know over the, because there are you know there there's so many players in the market in terms of there are consultancy companies there are institutions like us so how is that we could differentiate so what we've been trying to do of course um, thanks to um, uh, mr virani that you know he did a certain amount of study of how we originated because that was the thing now we are trying to move a little bit forward what we are trying to do is we have a unique association with iit bombay what we are trying to do is you know let's say they are doing something on you know looking at the future sustainability is playing a very important role you know uh, globally environment sustainability is playing a very very important role so and iit bombay has various areas that they work so we have an association where we can you know we go out together to the industry and uh, we see what is that we could offer you know as solutions so there's something because when we say that we have an association with iit bombay it definitely helps us so <clears throat> this is one of the associations you know we have so similarly you know when we go when you go and then there are there are other domains like you know uh, let's say industrial design couple of other areas so these are certain areas we are working along with that we have done something uh, known as uh, you know with certain in the bfs sector we have been fairly strong in terms of placing our students so that area also we have bfs organization doing some mutual fund surveys that's an area so this is such to tell you very good so my next question will be uh, professor ayan 
what strategies do you employ to instill a culture of continuous improvement uh, among the different uh, stakeholders like students professors subject subject experts uh, so like to uh, know about this so yes i mean you know one is you know we uh, you have to constantly be aware of the evolving technologies in today's uh, you know today's times of ai and uh, you know in, in we talking about digital technology uh, ai and the other artificial intelligence and a few other areas which are evolving it's important that we be aware of just like to give an example of your organization i hardly knew anything but as we got an idea that okay the digital technology is also moving forward you know using how do you make the best use of ai how do you make use of technology in your legal domain so it was a good learning for us so i think it's very very important to be aware you need not be experts to, um, you know that's what they they are saying that going forward is that we will have to be aware of all the technological changes you know when we are talking about you know humanoid robots or whatever the new technologies that are coming up you know that we have got to be aware of all the uh, latest technologies that are coming up and at the same time our students have to be skilled they have got to be extremely agile so one is we have to be extremely skilled as faculties we have to keep on upgrading ourselves and our students also have to be equally skilled and then the third point as i mentioned earlier is what is that unique that we bring through you know we spoke about the association of iit bombay also the same thing that what is the unique we bring in as an institution so which will help us to move forward you know basically very interesting uh continuing how do you ensure effective communication between students faculty and the project stakeholders during the project life cycle so i think you know um, was to put it very simple words the whatsapp communication is very very effective but i think constant communication it's not just you know you know your mobile phone has made things easier but i think the whatsapp group thing if effectively used you know when typically we to put it i mean this is nothing new again it's not rocket science anymore but then making the best use of technology because emails also really want to reach out fast to people ensure that you reach out effectively through a phone call or even through a whatsapp group messaging i think it really works well but basically i think you know uh, to uh, the old traditional model of a follow up is very very important and whatsapp group makes it very very what i found effective is you know, to just keep on you, although you may appoint a team and all but somewhere you know if you see how how well your team is working make them work but i think if you have the entire team in that particular group ensure the follow up is very very strong i think a, a very strong follow up at regular intervals during a week ensures that your job is done in time you know and be honest and transparent like with the project that we did with you also we were very transparent about what is our capability what we can do what we cannot do i think that transparency is very very important that you know that bring in the transparency this is what we are capable of doing this is what we are not be capable of doing this is the capability and the strength of the students and okay they will reach they will take a certain amount of time to reach a particular level so that transparency will broaden have proper reporting systems those things we will try to solve appreciate appreciate my uh, next question continuing what training and development opportunities are provided to students to equip them so that they are able to uh, work on the different projects whichever will come in uh, in future yeah so see one is you know that the way the curriculums are being they are taking up various certification you know you know in terms of the advanced excel skills or digital marketing so constant you know you have to keep on upgrading your own skills you know as i say with through certification so that keeps them equipped and at the same time you know um, you know see your own passion so i think what is important for any project that we do is see get students they should be interested many times you know we used to make this mistake we to get a project and we used to be after students instead of that i think you have to create the pull you know that's very important get students i think what we did in the second or third project going forward is get like we are doing a project with the mutual fund now you know on 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 investor awareness and all so we what we are doing is that we are not um yeah, trying to say that you know that please we have a project so please come and work with us no we are trying to really shortlist students who are interested like in the iit bombay internship that we did you know we uh, iit bombay did two workshops over here in, mm -hmm. in this particular campus this place itself two workshops were done the first was on, on the importance of energy management you know uh, manufacturing why energy management is important simple energy management is going to be very very critical today see all this power shortage water supply in this thing so they are doing an energy management is a division they have in this room so they said look are you doing this workshop to get a certificate from iit or are you genuinely interested in it? Hmm. so then that basis then we, we picked up a few students from mms who are actually in, they, they studied themselves that okay what is energy management how will i go and pitch energy management to a client or let's say you know financial database of which 
organization can support because to do energy management the companies will need money. So what I am saying is when we did this project we were also not very sure we will be able to do it because we do not have many science students, we do not have engineers but still we identified we were able to identify students who are passionate about it because it is okay IIT is a big brand name you do not get an opportunity to, mm. to do a project with IIT every day you know it is globally in India it is the most biggest institution you know it is the best technology institution and those things. So, but then we I think that is one learning that gets people who are interested and passionate about the thing then your results will really flow. Same just like in your placements and internships the same thing you know get very people true. who are interested in the thing. Very true, very yeah. true. Uh, so friends this was a section on the SICC working method. Uh, so, so we are learning you know we are we are also making mistakes because see uh, I bring in a strong industry uh, partnership experience across various organizations but it has been in prime of AC, you know uh, product selling, service selling which is very very straight but consultancy is very broad. And it is, it is very, very difficult also in their way. It is very, very broad. So, you have to know what are your strengths. Very when true. you are doing, let us say, when I am selling a, a you know, um, I am doing fundraising for a CSR project or I am selling a specific product, it is very, very clear. This is what I have to do. I, this is my product and this is if I am doing fundraising for a skill development program or for a NGO, it is very, very clear when we do all these sales that we have done all these years. But here, consultancy is very broad. So, you have to be very, very clear when you go to a client of what we can do and what we cannot do. Yes, and at the same yes. time also be aware of the fact where is that we can have an edge and not be another a me too kind of a thing. So, mm. I think what was good about the association with Prime Infotech is not like a me too, it is something you have specialized, you have you are in the legal technology, so you, you are you have software solutions, so which means you have the technology and also a legal technology, it is a unique domain, I do not think there are many players in this domain, Yes, correct. So, that brings in your and so um, you know and how long have you been in this domain, I mean just to uh, more than a decade. More than a decade, as, a, than as a an organization incorporated for more than a decade. More than, yes, more yes. Than a decade. Okay. So, so you know, so I feel that is very, very important that know what are your strengths, know yeah. are this thing and also see how you can have an edge. Itself. Very true. Yep. So, uh, uh, friends, SRCC did a project with us, Prime Infrared Solution. I am a legal tech evangelist and the host of this Coffee Conversation show. Uh, which this episode will be available on our YouTube channel. So, do watch this episode and subscribe to the Coffee Conversation YouTube channel. You did a market research project on legal technology adoption in India. So, what were the key objectives of this project? So, see the this was I would say it is a very interesting project and uh, you know as I mentioned earlier also, I think the objectives were basically to, to evaluate what kind of tools uh, are being used, how technology savvy are the legal firms, when you are talking it could be a legal firm, it could be the legal departments of companies. So, how technology savvy are they in terms of using the various technologies in the domain because I am not an expert but I am just broadly saying you know. Mm -hmm. So, how uh, good are they in terms of the understanding and usage because that is where you are I think very in a way it is a business solution also eventually. What you are trying to tap is you are doing a certain survey to see to what extent uh, I would say it, it's a it's a cue or a you know lead that okay how extent they can use their products or services. Yes. So yes, I mean what I'm um, uh, I would say we have is when we saw results you know let's say there about 65 you know, the 65 70 companies plus were approached as a team we had a team of about 10 11 students who got eventually certified so they approached including myself of which maybe the success was around 15 odd let's say okay but then we reached out to a number of companies yeah. so it was difficult. Uh, considering the profile of the student because they were in the first English thing but the exposure is excellent and I am yep. really glad the exposure is very good because it will eventually help them when they go in for the internships and placements how to talk to clients, how to position a product and how do you close because especially when you are selling a very sensitive thing because legal technology is very very sensitive and uh, it is a very very sensitive area so people have to have that confidence in you sometimes they will say no so even if we have been very honest somebody has said no also we have been very very frank about we have not tried to push people we have said look we are doing it for an academic research and all there is yes. no other thing. So, <clears throat> so I think the key objectives were was of course to give uh, from a business point of view to, for a prime infotech was to, they, they get an idea ki, how many of them are really adopting technology and all and to that extent they can eventually use it for their business and of course from a students point of view it gave them an exposure that they wanted. That's right. So friends uh, we were very uh, happy to collaborate with SRCC and their management students. 
it was an opportunity to empower them to face difficult situations and also get an understanding the adoption of uh, legal technology in india by the law firm as well as a corporate legal which there were many insights which will be sharing uh, so professor and continuing conversation what preparation did you do for this kind of market research well <clears throat> preparation was i think the initial guidance we got from your team that how what is because i think they you gave us an initial amount of database which helped us so if we have to do that and then i think certain tips like you know going through the ipos of the because last 6 7 months you see the business financial newspapers a lot of ipos have been coming so we try to use our data that database also you know the ipo databases and all the various databases which are available ipo database was very useful because the company secretary legal information was all coming but i think the database which is given by your team also helped us actually that's all thank you for that uh, so friends whenever we work with uh, students or mm. uh organizations like this uh management college or any in institution mm -hmm. we uh become collaborative partner we give them full support wherever is required so that uh what you <clears throat> see is that deliverability and satisfaction come across for with our team as well as students or the institution partners those who are collaborating with us they also get to learn achieve and get empowered so this is where prime hypothetic solution uh, has a mission to work with to empower wherever needed for we also have an e learning platform prime learning where we have different courses where students can come management professionals or the professionals entrepreneurs can come enroll uh, the courses are free you can get a certificate so professor ayan mm. uh continue a conversation mm. you got the data you got everything learning everything uh, support from prime fintech you also very uh, skilled person sir what are the challenges did you face you as well as a student <coughs> during this uh, market research because this is a very different type of market mm -hmm. research from other projects that you mm -hmm. said in my earlier conversation you did for mutual fund in, in investor awareness this is a very different sensitive many things mm -hmm. so how did you tackle what are your different methodologies that you used which will help future students to uh, become more confident and take up such kind of projects which they shouldn't feel shy of so um, i think see the challenges one we faced is as i said the domain is very specialized so there is sensitive in confidence because couple of places where we said you know it's a legal thing because you know people i always believe one thing is there's nothing like a professional person relationship let's say when we are talking to mr uh, virani there is a uh, personal but then things are happening very on a very professional manner so that professional relationship is very very important because when people share any information in today's times it's a one has to see to it that uh, whether the information is okay they are comfortable sharing with it or not so we have been honest with them that yes it's it's it, it, there's nothing really sensitive and there is um, it's more for this thing but if they were a little bit hesitant to to share the information then we could not really do anything and we did not because we had to respect because we are talking to companies okay it could be a small uh, legal firm or this thing so we had to respect the fact that they are not being um, they 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 little bit and so that's one challenge we face that when we are talking to certain organizations if they are not getting back uh, this thing you know where they got back it was fine but i think it is it is it is it's a, i think the challenge is that when they see that okay it's it's a survey there is a certain amount of when you talk about a survey itself there is a certain hesitation and then when you talk about legal technology it gets and then you know three things three obstacles survey <laughs> legal technology and then uh, software solution because technology is there so then you know they will say because anything is it related it goes to it typically and yeah. there is legal matter so there are three uh, i would say obstacles or three hurdles in a way you know for survey people tend to avoid then the second part is your as i said the the the, the, the legal the, the technology part of it and this thing the legal part of it so these hassles were there but wherever we had success we had success with people who were supportive uh, you know and where we didn't uh, and i'm happy that the younger students who are hardly in the first semester they were able to overcome those obstacles you know um there about i think out of um, 11 students there were six uh, whatever i mean uh, seven plus three, 10 students were there yeah. four five of them are able to get those surveys done you know get the complete survey done which is good but <clears throat> this challenge remains you know this challenge remains and now one uh, option is how do we really overcome this challenge has to be seen because i think one thing what we couldn't do was maybe if you are meeting the person face to face it get reduced for example if yes. i'm talking to you on phone 
because most of the communication has happened on phone or through uh, you know the or through whatsapp call and this thing so they i don't know the person but if you meet the person face to face so we've been honest that look you know we've given our card credentials and everything that we are an institution we have a reputation as an institution as a number 3b school and all that so we've been honest about that but i think if a little bit face to face if it happens maybe this challenge can be overcome yes it go could face to face because the challenge we had was because students have a certain curriculum it was difficult for yeah. them to move out so i think yeah. that is how it can work better to get talk about more successes you go face to face you know you have your uh, if you go in with your cover then that's all that's all yeah with the summer uh, vacation coming up you can uh, try it out sir yeah, hey, field visits if you want we, yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Professor Ayan, what methodologies and tools did you employ for regarding this market research project? <coughs> so, it was um, you know I would say it was more of random sampling, is I would say uh, more of for uh, because you know it was a, there was a certain given number. I would say a more of a um, 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 yeah, more of convenient sampling and random sampling from the given database. because okay. it was it was a huge database uh, which we had and we took i would say it is more of convenient and random sampling is what we can did. you share some process steps like in our uh, with the backend team you oh. share that you followed some process steps so that will help uh, a uh, students who want to be part of the string of any research project like mm. you said you send an uh, email did mm. some research on linkedin you did your mm. uh, other research work so can you elaborate on this part so, <coughs> that I will help it's important i think the one thing one you have an organization details you do a little bit of a study on what the organization background credentials are and then depending on the research area that you are in you try to talk to that domain person or it may not it may sometimes if you need a survey from a particular department is good not to talk to a department talk to some other department you know because they can be more flexible to understand for example if you are doing you know um, any any functional head you can talk to you not talk to that specific person and if that person you are able to convince that person then he or she can internally convince you know suppose there is a legal survey to be done and if you know a marketing person or a finance person or and that person is willing to help you it goes through that person it becomes relatively easier because then you have a champion internally <coughs> so do a little bit of a study on the organization uh, what business they are into and then reach out to a person who is ready to help you it becomes easier yes and then yes. of course everything else falls in place that i would say that this is one uh, this thing and of course you know when you do a research you you see the company's credentials the linkedin profile of the person but ideally it's important to get a champion a helpful person in the organization because yeah. if you get stuck suppose you are doing something on it survey or this thing and if you get stuck with that person then your job is not happening so i think this is one so thing we have to yeah we have devised something like uid mm. user influencer decision maker yeah so if you are stuck with one uh, yeah. person so for example a user connect with an influencer connect mm. with a decision maker yeah. so these are the uh, we have devised according to job roles mm. uh, this is for any industry mm. work in this method of uid mm. and there will be uh, you will get mm. uh, success mm. so like you said ki bhai you got stuck up with one helpful mm. person say he is from the uh, user category mm. connect with mm. someone from the i category yeah. or if he's not uh, that helpful connect yeah, with the yeah. d category yeah. so that way you will get uh, someone yes, will be yes. there yeah. to help you and Because i think one practical your efforts thing is, are yeah, there yeah, yeah. the universe looks at your efforts mm. and will help you to complete yeah, yeah, that correct uh, yeah, uh, so and i think another thing is you know sometimes we waste too much of our client this is what we have learned with the hard way we sometimes we waste you know there there's a database of 100 Don't waste too much time on those three, four cases which are not happening. Go to yeah. the bigger, build your funnel. You know, in sales, yes. there's a phase, build your funnel. You have hundred, go to two hundred, two hundred, three hundred, go to thousand. Have a bigger database. That's what is keep building your funnels. You know, I think that is what is is important. Very there will true. Will be always be a few certain segments who will not respond, but I think you learn the hard way. Build, mm. keep building your funnel. You know. Very true. Very true. So, Professor Ayan, my last question for this special episode: What advice would you give to the future? interns or management students or any other students want to work on projects for example this is market research any other projects mm. so accordingly give some advice so they come forward and be participative in the projects whichever they are 
being given by so the i think the passion is important you know one is see what happens when you come to a management level i keep telling students also when we teaching see my profile although i have been in you know i people use the word professor but i actually i am a corporate person all through i have been here also my role is very much corporate because i am dealing with corporates in institutions and role is absolutely corporate because it is industry research and consulting it's just like a business development role mm -hmm. so and, and that's what i have done from day one in all through so it is very much there teaching of course ultimately in teaching also what i do is more of practical teaching yes. when i go and do entrepreneurship i am actually talking about what amitabh kant has said yesterday you know in terms of how startups mm -hmm. are coming what yeah. they are doing how many startups how many unicorns and all mm -hmm. so i have a totally you not know, from the theoretical model to talk completely practical in terms of negotiation selling skills also what are the linkedin or is talking about in terms of the best selling of the you know there are there are sales experts and all talking about this we talk all practical things so i would say that pick up a project where you are passionate about and coincidentally in management you know in school level graduation level a lot of things we never used to like it and we used to but coincidentally when i did management studies i found i try to relate things to practicality you have to see the where is the application if you just say entrepreneurship management you find it boring but you relate it to the news and what is happening around you you get interest to it so that yeah. that application is important now market research when we are doing for certain things we find it hefty but as we get down to field and doing it now certain things my students were supposed to do but i actually went out and field and did it when we were doing it for one of the one so what happens is that, that, that then you get a feel of things you know and so that that passion and the zeal is very very important and uh, i think relating things to industry is very very important so i think one is the passion you need to have the passion to do it so that's what i was sending one of the recent fmcg seminars also they said the same thing be passionate about what you do and try to relate it to realities practical realities if you just take it look at it very theoretically are project karna hai you would not find it interesting but try to relate it to practicalities and you can you can see uh, this thing okay. thank you for this lovely conversation mm -hmm. on uh, srcc activities mm -hmm. uh, different projects the ways students should be working on different methodologies mm -hmm. and the opportunities which you work so hard being a corporate person you know how the corporate world works and how you have been uh, been on now you are very fortunate having worked on both the sides how to uh, keep a balance that is the beauty uh, of having a corporate person working in industrial research and consulting which you are bringing your experience and i i hope sims will benefit a lot not only the institution but the students which you give your passion i've seen during our conversations that you want to give your best to students take out the most and when they go in the corporate world they are more equipped to face and are ready mm. for the corporate world Correct. with your experience Correct. so friends look forward to this episode and students as well as uh, educational institutions do watch this episode and we are here to collaborate so signing off this is thank you line amir virani here a legal tech evangelist author of 12 ebooks and the host of coffee conversation it was a lovely conversation we had and today or the completion day of this market research on legal technology adoption in india with we give certificates and a personalized gift so uh signing off see you stay safe bye